What is up here? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we completed the room that you see me in right now, but interestingly enough, I was told that there is indeed a hidden file here, so I came back to the previous save and was working through the puzzle again because we were uh, forcibly pushed through the end of it when we, um, when we initially used that safe password we found, but... I was trying to find where the second one might be, and interestingly enough, after we close this locker, it gets locked again. Um, I'll see if I can maybe demonstrate that again, or maybe I'll show the text or whatever, but darn it, I don't know. Yeah, so basically, I've been going through the puzzle. I got to the point where I have the first safe password. Yeah, so I have this one on the left here, and we know that that one confirms the ending of this room, but we need to find another one on the right. And what's interesting is this locker, after you close it, and once you get that green passcode, it locks again, meaning there's another four digit number we need to have found. And that's what's gonna give us our hidden file password, which is surprisingly uh, clever. I would not have expected that. And what came to mind is this mirror here. So, for example, if I were to input the number, let's say, what was it we just did? One, nine, eight, six. So there's the usual, the, congratulations, the second passcode can be found on the left portion of the display above the phone. Left? Yeah, so it's just like, um, what Zero the Third said before with the 2592 number, right? Which became then 2652, and we input that again. So not only is that 1986 number a passcode for that locker, it's also something we can input in the phone, and that's gonna give us probably now what we see as 99861, which is gonna be our second passcode for that locker. What the heck? It's not a phone number? That means this number has to be. Exactly. So now let's try that and see if that works. Also, I messed around with the settings a little bit and this should be a little bit cleaner of a recording because I turned on V-Sync and hopefully the recording isn't adversely impacted by it. Hopefully, <laughs> he says optimistically. I'll take a look afterwards in terms of editing. But anyways, 9861, right? There we go. Oh, and thank you to those of you who have clarified about the hidden files. It's something that most of the time isn't going to be impactful in terms of spoilers, but could potentially ruin some things with some of the files. So I'm just going to wait until the end to look at them, and hope you guys can look forward to that. But um, in the meantime, I'm going to try and collect them with what I can. Whoa, so this number works too? The color is different though. There we go. So moon, moon, and sun. Huh, this one's different. The shapes are different and so is the placement. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this is for the safe too. I better make sure to remember them. Great. Okay, and with that I can say that this puzzle is genuinely complete. So let's head on down here and plug that in, because we know the other one is going to basically end things for us. Alright. Hope you guys don't mind me doing this, I guess. A lot of you probably are like, okay, just get to the next story part, but I don't know, I'm, I'm a collector, I like completing things, and if there was a part of the puzzle I didn't fully get, I like to go back and understand what I could have done better, how I could have found a particular clue, etc. Anyways, yes, it opened. Man, what good is a victory dance when there's no one there to see it? I'm lonely. <laughs> I remember him saying that before. Alright, so we picked up the gold file, and now we can input the other passcode and we'll be going ahead. I wonder if I'll just do some editing magic so that <laughs> you guys uh, don't have to re-see the same parts. What was the original one? Yeah, it was just stars in the lower left corner. So we'll do that. Because this is technically a separate save file, I'm not able to skip through um, this text because, well... I technically haven't seen it before on this save file. After every episode, I save to a different save slot just in case something goes wrong with the recording and I need to go back to an earlier save file. Or in this case, it was really helpful for going back to solve a puzzle I haven't um, completely solved, right? <clears throat> and I wouldn't be surprised if later on, via the flowchart, we'd be able to do that. But I just, I guess, for myself, I wanted to complete them as I go along. And the other thing is I don't like looking at the flowchart earlier than necessary, right? 
I don't want to have an idea of what the big branching points are, or even how many different branching points there are in any given situation, until I'm already going back through the story and being like, whoa, so many different things could have happened based on this particular result. Or, I could have made a decision here, but it ultimately didn't matter because these two pathways, you know, reunite at this point. Something like that. So, I like to avoid the flowchart. Also, one other thing I messed around with while I was redoing the puzzle is trying to find out how I can toggle the UI or the text boxes, etc. so that I can just kind of get whatever imagery is on screen, whether that's character art, whether that's, I don't know, Schrodinger's cat title or whatever it may be. I wanted to see if I could do that because in at least 999, that was something really helpful for getting thumbnails. <laughs> but I don't think we're going to be able to do that now. Um, at least not from anything I saw in the game's help controls. Maybe if you guys know something about that, please let me know, because, again, make a quality of life improvement on my end, but... Otherwise... Alright, we're just about through the Schrodinger's cat explanation, and then we just have to input the key at the end of the hallway. And then once we've done that, we should be clear, right? Because we walked to the end of that hallway and got to another door. We actually we walked quite some distance. And we were about to see what was behind that door. And that's where I believe I left you guys hanging. <laughs> so, thanks for your patience as I spend a couple minutes going through the end of this puzzle again. Still not sure how I'm going to edit that beginning portion, but hopefully you guys enjoy it regardless. And now we can move on. So what's interesting is we might have... We might have actually met up with the other crews, right? This is where I left off. Now it's coming back. <laughs> we made our way down the hallway and at the end waiting for us. Ah, perfect. <laughs> just as I was saying that we should have met up with the crew, given other people solve their puzzles, just kind of from that brief look at the map. But anyways, hey look, looks like the gang's all here. Who is Sigma? Suggesting we split up? Referring to everybody as the gang? Are you Freddy from uh, <laughs> Scooby-Doo? <laughs> What's up? Nothing's up. We left our room, headed left, and ended up here. Sigma, let me see that map you found earlier. Oh, right. Yeah, it looks like there's a, a path of least resistance involving no more locked doors that everybody was able to follow. and eventually make their way here. I feel like, for the sake of story and figuring out the big picture, I should be keeping track of who is working with who in each of these rooms, but I feel like that's a little bit too much for me to handle at the moment when I'm still just trying to remember everybody's names. <laughs> oh, no matter which door we took, all of them led back here. That's the same as the map we found in the lounge. The lounge? Oh, we found something like that, too. Our room was an infirmary. Oh, no. Oh, no, those of you who have seen my Corpse Party Let's Plays know how I feel about the infirmary. That's so. We found ours in the crew quarters. Hmm. Maybe we should sit down for a bit and exchange information. Assuming we have that time. No. There's plenty of time for that after we check out this elevator. I mean, that's fair. We don't really know if we're on a particular time limit or anything. Where's this elevator gonna take us? What the? This is just like the other floor. These doors have colors on them too. Oh, different ones though. The one on the left is green. The one in the middle is blue. And the one on the right is red. Interesting. Hmm. Are these chromatic doors? 
Look, there's a box here. It looks like the ones we saw earlier. Lock, huh? Yeah, won't budge. What's interesting is, I mean, we've talked before about how a pair and a single or a solo for the same color can open doors of the complement of that color. Are they also able to open up a door of the same color? I don't think this was addressed in the rules. Just like the other doors. No good trying to force it open, I suppose. Is something wrong, Alice? You've been staring at your bracelet. Oh. No, I'm fine, but it looks like my guess was right. Your guess? The numbers have changed. Numbers? Oh, yeah. The time left. Looks like two, uh, two hours. Six minutes. That's a lot of time. Oh, for Christ's sake. You're telling me we're going to have to just sit around here for another two hours? Looks like we don't have a choice then. Better find a bathroom. <laughs> we gotta head back. Clover, how about you show them that note we found? I guess maybe this is a way to encourage everybody to go back to that original lounge area and use the Ambidex cards they just potentially, you know, obtained in those rooms to build up their points. And I'm wondering if we need to change our number of points in order to go through. I, I'm trying to remember the rules. I knew the rules were important. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. Help. Maybe rules. What were, what were Zero's rules? Supplementary rules? Can I not do anything with them? What? They're not going to tell me about them? Okay, I guess not. But I'm trying to remember if the total number going through each door had to be nine, because I think that's... Or was it just three people going through nine? Or going through each door? Either way. I mean, we'll find out, I'm sure. Clover, how about you show them that note we found? Oh? Oh, okay, hold on. Hmm? Was it something about supplementary rules? Because we found a note just like that. It was in the infirmary. Yeah, we found one too. It was in the safe in the crew quarters. Here are a few more rules for you. Once you've opened a door, you can hop through it as much as you like. The chromatic doors are like that too. Once you open them, even I care to keep you from going in and out of them. Any color of bracelet can go through them, and as many people as you like. But, 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 you have to escape before you can take advantage of this free reign rule. Once you've activated a chromatic door and gone through it to the puzzle beyond, it won't let you go until you've solved the puzzle. If that's true, then we can all go back the way we came and get into the warehouse. I don't think Zero's saying we can. I think he's saying we have to. I think, that said, it would be nice if people went back through each other's rooms as opposed to their, the room that they solved, right? Otherwise, what's the point of that keycard? You mean this? The Ambidex room key? We found some too. That makes six then. One for each AB room. And I guess one for each identity, right? Three pairs and three solo. Let's head back to the warehouse. <laughs> so when Zero says jump, we say how high, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like it, stay here. He's he's basically like, well, if you don't want to follow the orders, be my guest. <laughs> A stupid angry mutt watching the door sounds about right. Oof. The tension is heating up. <laughs> old man. Better hope I don't have rabies. <laughs> you self-satisfied old turd. <laughs> Well, what's it going to be? Alice is like, back to the matter at hand. 
Are you going to go back with us? Or are you staying here by yourself? Alright, fine. I'm going. But yeah, I think they should try to go back through each other's rooms so that they can at least see what the other people went through. Maybe inspect the places briefly, if they've got a couple hours, right? Or maybe that's just how much time Zero would expect them to take to get through the ambidex rooms, right? If it's going to be a two-hour puzzle, you better take all the time you can to get through it. You certainly don't want to be in an ambidex room when the monochromatic doors open, right? Or monochromatic, just chromatic doors. I rarely use, very rarely use the word chromatic. I almost exclusively have used, like, monochromatic in the past. I'm trying to remember what situations I even really used it. There's um, <laughs> there's one song from an anime called Data Live called Monochrome Sky. I that's probably where I used it most. So this is the crew quarters, huh? Just as the note said, we had no trouble getting in here. That means we can go to the infirmary, or the lounge. Or, if somebody's, you know, got some ulterior motives, they can go and mess with the scenes of other rooms. Ah. Yeah, we can check out any of them. Hey, look, Grandpa! <laughs> They've got a poster of a lady in here, it looks like the ones you've got back home. <laughs> That's hilarious. And, and in the Japanese, he was like a, a, an erotic poster or a picture of an erotic lady, <laughs> like the ones you've got back home. That's funny. Hmm. <laughs> this one's pretty odd. I think we're talking at least 14, maybe even 15 EU. I think it's like arrow units. Agreed. I sure would like to take it home with me. Unfortunately, I don't think this is really the time for that. How old is Quark? <laughs> Let's keep moving. Whoa, hold on. Grandpa? Since when were they buddies? Yeah, that's a good question. Or had they always been that close? In other words, they'd known each other before the Nonary game. And if Quark was calling Temyoji Grandpa, maybe they were even related. Alice and Clover seem to be close, too. Just how many of these people knew each other already? And does Sigma maybe know somebody that he doesn't realize yet? I would not be surprised if Sigma and Phi actually knew each other from the past. <laughs> Let's go, buddy. I can't wait to get out of here and get back to my, uh, grandpa videos. Uh... So this is going to be his characteristic, his, uh, his little quirk. <laughs> you mean the ones you keep in the locked cabinet? Shh. You're being too loud, Quark. You have to say these things quietly. Everybody's like, awkward. Alright, so it looks like we're making it back to the lounge. Or the warehouse. Whoa. Oh, and Zero's waiting for us. Oh, you're finally done? You were taking so long, I hopped off for a little nap. Oh, for... Yawning? Really? You're just a computer program. You don't get tired. Hey, Dio-kun. My temper's got a hair trigger, and you're awfully close to pulling it. So I'd watch my mouth if I were you. Otherwise, well, do you really need me to spell it out? Forget it. 
That's a good boy. Alrighty, let's get back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, when the music stops, things are about to get real important. <laughs> Namely, how do you get more BP? We go into the AB rooms, right? Look. We've got some keys for them right here. K and Quark have two each, so we've got six all together. But who goes into what room? Also, it is worth noting, right, that K and Quark found four in their room, whereas each of the other rooms only contained one. Meaning, in the future, there is a potential for somebody to sabotage the other players by limiting intentionally the number of Ambidex cards, or keeping more Ambidex cards for themselves so that they can access more rooms and build up their own BP, right? Anyways, we, we still do need to figure out how we actually decide which people go in which rooms. Uh, that doesn't really matter. Oh, are they all the same? Anybody can go into any room. But there were only six rooms. Didn't I tell you? The two members of a pair share the same destiny. Oh, so from here on out, are pairs not entering the Ambidex rooms, and instead one member of that pair will enter? <laughs> K is like, oh, then you mean both members of a pair need to go into the same room? When I literally just stated, or, you know, thought, maybe the opposite? <laughs> Gotta love it. Yes, yes, yes. What do we do after we go into the room? Play a game. I'm a pretty big fan of playing games. Just like it says on the door. You play the Ambidex game. Wait. What's Ambidex supposed to mean, anyway? I would guess it's short for ambidextrous. Most use the word to refer to the ability to use both of one's hands instead of favoring the left or right, but it can also be taken to mean someone who is duplicitous or two-faced. It's a game of betrayal, then. Well, yes, I guess you could put it that way. Huh. I knew it was too good to be true. There had to be some sort of downside. <laughs> then what's the nonary game? Ah, that refers to the whole enchilada. The nonary game is a game where you try to open the number 9 door and escape. The Ambidex game is just a mini-game you play as part of the larger one. Make sense? Like heck, this stuff is confusing. Is it? <laughs> or is it that you're just a few carats short of a bushel? I will be honest, these, these bunny puns, I very much appreciate them. What do you think? You arrogant little baka. And it, of course, like, Zero is the type of character that just loves to get on people's nerves, that are already frustrated, right? So every little bit of extra anger coming out from Dio is just, you know, icing on the cake for Zero. Well, that's just how I am, so you better get used to it. Now, can I have you all move to the AB room, please? Now, I'll give you more specifics once everyone's inside. Oh, so we're, we're jumping right to it. I think it'll probably be easier to understand that way. Kay, Quark, and myself each gave one card to Luna, Alice, and Tenmyoji. Then we headed into the Ambidex rooms. There wasn't really any discussion about who'd go into which door, but Fai and I found ourselves heading toward the leftmost room. I wonder if people are, you know, naturally inclined to return to the room they started in, right? I don't remember that exact order, uh, but... <laughs> 
It's kind of like an unspoken assigned seats. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like when you go to a class and there aren't official assigned seats, but usually in the first couple days, people sit in a particular spot and then it's like that's their seat going forward, right? There's nothing really binding about it, but everybody knows and everybody just kind of goes back to the place they initially started at. It's pretty interesting. Anyways, looks like everybody's gone in already. I think we should head in too? Why are you asking me? Just hurry up and get in there. Okay, okay. An Ambidex gate has been opened. Forty-five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. So interesting, so they don't have that full two hours to work with. So there's no advantage to starting earlier, so long as there's at least forty-five minutes before those monochromatic doors. Why do I keep saying monochromatic? <laughs> those chromatic doors uh, open again. What's interesting is what polling is, right? Remain until Ambidex game polling closes. It's almost like each room is, I mean, we're, we're gonna find out in a second, but I like to speculate as we go and then see, you know, how things line up. It seems like each room is maybe gonna be a puzzle where you solve it for the ability to vote in some sort of poll, right? And then the result of that, hmm, I don't really know. What? This game's got a time limit too? Wait, something wrong? No, nothing, I just, there's no one here. What are you talking about? Of course there isn't anyone here. Well, yeah, I know, I just... Let's get inside. <laughs> what was that about, Sigma? Yeah, right. If you've got a time limit, might as well get going. So the room more or less looks the same as it did before. Yeah. This looks just like the room we woke up in. Yeah. Well, there's one thing that's different. That screen? Yeah. It looks like there's something on it. The Ambidex game will now begin. To enter your vote, please touch the start button on your screen. Once you have entered your vote, the door will lock automatically. It will not open again until the polling period has finished. What are we voting on? I wonder if the game is actually going to put a timer on us to make a decision. <laughs> Baka! What are you doing, you idiot? What? I just pressed the start button. Did you even read what it said? Once you press that button, it locks the door for 40 minutes. Now, thanks to you, we're stuck in here for almost an hour. Oh, really? Yes! Really? Fai's like, come on, can you not even read the, you know, the directions? Well, they're stuck now, I guess. Hey, 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 looks like everybody's closed their AB gates. AB gates. That's... That's the door to the AB room, silly. You're in the AB room right now. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be continuing my earlier explanation. Ah, uh, the music change. Now, let's get this party started. Let me tell you about the AB game. Let me tell you about the AB game. Since it's a game, you're obviously going to have an opponent. That's not necessarily true. You don't need to have an opponent for a game. You can just play a game with yourself and enjoy it. But it's not like this is a battle royale where you just fight everybody. Each round will be a one-on-one -on -one battle. Mano a mano, or mano a womano. <laughs> um, that, that's kind of funny, but I'm curious to see, it's not like it's going to be a round robin, right? Because that would be, that would take way too long. But it's also not like it's going to be a bracket type system, because, well, 
at least I don't think it would be because we don't have a, a nice number for that. Well, there are two people in each pair, aren't there? So it'll be more of a two on one battle, I guess. Gotcha. So we'll be. It, well, you're probably wondering who you're going to be competing with. It's actually really easy. You'll be competing against whoever you paired up with to go through the chromatic doors. Aw, oh, man. Why we got to. Alice was a character I wanted to hang out with a lot. She's a character I wanted to get to know. She's one of the most mysterious things from 999. And now, I mean, we don't know what the punishment is going to be for this AB game. But I can almost certainly say that by pairing up with her for that event, we are now going to decrease the likelihood that she is successful later on. Anyways. For example, Sigkun and Fikun paired up with Alice Kun and went through the cyan door, didn't they? That means that Sigkun and Fikun would be playing against Alice Kun. I guess this adds an extra dimension of, of complexity to choosing who you want to pair up with for the monochromatic doors. Do you want to have an opponent that you perceive as, well, giving you a better chance of winning? And it goes the other way, too. And it goes the other way, too. Alice Kuhn's opponent will be Sig Kuhn and Fai Kuhn, which is not a given, necessarily, so I, I appreciate that clarification. <laughs> Obviously, that means potassium. Who is that supposed to be again? Oh, because <laughs> he goes by K. That's that's actually really funny. And and Clover's enemy will be Tenmyoji. The nicknames are actually pretty funny. And Bio and Quirk's enemy will be Mooney. Well, I guess enemy isn't really the right word, is it? After all, if you choose ally, then you're then they're your ally. Uh, are we going to be put in like a prisoner's dilemma situation, <clears throat> where the the benefit is greatest if we choose to work together, but there's still a benefit, a, a guaranteed benefit, if we choose to I don't know kill the other person and they choose to ally us or whatever. What? Don't get it? Well, don't worry. Just listen while Zero the Third explains it all. First, I want every bunny to focus on the screen on the device in the back of the room. You should see A, ally, and B, betray on it, do you? All you guys have to do is pick. Just pick one of those easy options. Of course, the question is we don't know what's at stake right now, do we? Your BP will go up or down, depending on what you pick. <laughs> it's a little complicated and some of you are a little slow, so I made this handy chart. The plus and minus are from your point of view. Okay, so if we both choose to betray each other, we get no points. If we both choose to ally, we get plus two points. But if you choose to ally, while the other person chooses to betray, you lose two points. And if you choose to betray while the other person um, allies, you gain three points. Right? So there's a consistent, you know, both people succeed, I guess, or prosper if they both choose to ally. But there's a greater reward if you choose to betray and that other person also doesn't, or that person does not choose to betray. If you sucker somebody into trying to ally with you, but you betray them, you get the highest reward. Um, but if you both choose to betray, neither of you improves at all. So I think, it, I think this does qualify as a prisoner's dilemma. I'm not, you know, super specific with the details, but it, it seems like it to me. 
So let's say you choose allies, so does your opponent. You'll get 2 BP, and so will they, and you'll all get a nice, fuzzy, warm feeling inside. They call that the best pal's outcome. It's pretty funny. Sorry I'm kind of talking over Zero, but he's just kind of explaining what we just talked about. Just puts a smile on your face, doesn't it? Next is what you get if you choose ally, but your opponent chooses betray. If that happens, you lose 2 BP and they get 3. We call that the stupid jerk face outcome. <laughs> Somebody did that to me. I'd skin him and stew him with some taters. That's pretty funny. But, yeah, you can also see how that this isn't necessarily a zero-sum game, right? If everybody chooses to ally, well, then everybody should eventually make it to nine, right? We start with three points. All we need to get above no to nine or greater is six, right? If there are three ambidex game room opportunities and everybody chooses ally, well, then we would all successfully make it out of the nonary game. Of course the game's not going to make it that easy and there's probably somebody in here planted to betray at some point and then the question is going to be who is betraying right although it would be fairly obvious i think if somebody betrayed because based on the point outcomes you know who your partner is you know what your point outcome is and it's shown on your bracelet and your partner's point outcome is also shown on the bracelet so you can know exactly who clicked betray and and why um and then Although then that would complicate because that person will inevitably have to go through a chromatic door with someone, right? And then those people will be partners, you know, the next time. And will that person who's partnered with a previous betrayer, will that person choose ally? Anticipating potential betray from their opponent. Unlikely. So that could complicate things. But again, I still think it's kind of an everybody wins situation if everybody chooses ally. Anyways. The third choice is the opposite bet. It's when you choose betray, but your nice innocent opponent chooses ally. This time you're the one who gets 3 VP, and they're the one who loses too. We call that the serves them right outcome. I mean, what were they thinking? Choosing ally was a stupid choice, and there's nothing for you to feel guilty about. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And finally. The very last scenario. This is when you choose betray and so does your opponent. If that happens, neither of you gets or loses anything. Absolutely zero change in BP. Oh, boring. You call this the why even bother outcome. As the Game Master here, this is the situation I want to avoid the most. I think what's, what would be really interesting to know is how many Ambidex Game Room opportunities we have, because if there are at least three, we can make a really good argument that everybody should just pick Ally each time. If there are less than three, then that complicates things, right? You're probably wondering about the pairs, aren't you? Because yeah, if there are less than three Ambidex Room game opportunities, in order to reach nine, first of all, not everybody's going to be able to, right? It, it changes the dynamic drastically, and two people would need to, or somebody would, in order to reach nine, need to successfully betray their opponent in both scenarios. Both of those, yeah, there would have to be two if there were only less than three, assuming it is possible at all to make it <laughs> to number nine. Anyways, you're probably wondering about the pairs, aren't you? Well, let me explain. Remember how I told you that both people in a pair share a destiny? Well, that applies here too. The two of you only get one vote. Makes sense. You get to choose once between ally or betray. That doesn't mean you split your points though. You both get three points or lose two points or whatever. In other words, what you see on this chart is what you get. And we have 40 minutes to decide? Okay then. I think that about does it for the basic rules. Well, actually, there's a little bit more, but no, 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 Zero. You have to tell us what that extra bit is. 
Now they'll just have to wait, I guess. No, I don't like that. It's inevitably about the consequences, right? There's totally something else that's, you know, a potential problem. What happens if you run out of zero points, for example, or run, run out of points, for example? Or do you die? Because that, that could be pretty bad. <laughs> what? Why does it have to wait? Hush now. It'll be okay. I don't know about that one. No, it won't. Thirty minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. I guess one other thing to consider is what happens if nobody votes, right? Somebody's in a Ambidex room and they don't choose either option. Do they die? Like, we don't really know about that. I and I can't see it being advantageous in some situations. But unless unless you're intentionally trying to get somebody killed, for example. But I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I've got to hop along now. Don't do something harebrained and wait till the last minute. You've got plenty of time, so think it out. Which is a great bit of advice in general, right? If you have to make a really important decision, try to make it, you know, in advance so that you're not actually making that decision as the timer really runs down. Uh, that's when you're most prone to make a, a poor decision. Bye bye now. Have a nice trust. <laughs> Why is it? Zero's always saying, have a nice blank, right? Man. What are we going to do? AB game on Kotoka. About the AB game? Yeah. Should we choose ally or betray? Yeah, it's a tough call. I mean, you, you either think in terms of if you assume your opponent is choosing ally, you can get you can choose betray to get the most points. You can choose ally to get some points, but then also to encourage people to choose ally for you in the future. I think that's the biggest thing here, right? If you assume there are going to be more AB games, which I'm fairly confident there are, you want to make it so that people will give you opportunities to get points. Because if somebody's going to choose to betray you every single time, because they think you're going to betray them, then you're basically locking in a future of only gaining or, or not changing your BP points at all, right? Zero points each time. Because if you have a history of betraying people, very few people are going to be willing to choose ally. And um, and then, of course, you're not going to choose ally, so then you choose betray and, and so forth, right? And you'll eventually be left out. So if you want to avoid that, I think, it, especially in this first game, you have to pick ally. This is really kind of an interesting game. It seems like it's based on the prisoner's dilemma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's that? You've never heard of it? It's a thought experiment that uses game theory to examine why people do or don't cooperate. <laughs> I love this. Let's say Apple and Banana have committed a serious crime. Apple and Banana. I just gave them the first names I thought of. They don't mean anything, but they're drawn very cutely. Anyway, Apple and Banana are caught by the police and sent off to separate cells far away from one another. In other words, there's no way for them to contact each other. And they're not, like, telepaths or something. So that's the setup. I also love this music. You following me? Yeah, keep going. So a detective shows up. He visits each cell and tells them both exactly the same thing. It goes something like this. You can both clam up, if that's what you want. We've got enough to put you both in the slammer for two years if you do. Now, if you flip on your pal over there and tell me everything, I can get your sentence reduced to one year. 
お前の相方は懲役15年の刑に処されることになる。That means your buddy will serve 15, but that ain't your problem, right? 逆にお前の方が目標を続けて、相方の方が白状したら。Of course, if he decides to spill the beans, it goes the other way. 相方は1年でシャバに復帰し。He gets one year. お前は15年もの長きにわたって。刑務所の臭い飯を食い続けることになるだろう。And you get to spend 15 years eating government cheese. では、二人が揃って自白をした場合はどうなるか。You're probably wondering if both of you confess. その場合、二人の刑期は等しく10年になる。Well, I can shave off a little time for saving me trouble, but you'll still both do 10 years. さあ、どうする ?So, punk, what's it gonna be? 素直に全てを打ち明けるか。それともこのまま目標を続けるか。You gonna give me what I want, or are you gonna keep that trap shut? お前の相方もこの話を知っている。Of course, I told your partner the same thing I just told you. やつはどうするだろうな。I wonder if you can trust him to keep the cat in the bag. よく考えて、結論を出してくれ。No rush, I'll give you plenty of time to think about it. So that's the prisoner's dilemma. I feel, I mean, obviously I already gave some of my thoughts on it, but I feel pretty compelled personally to. Choose to, to clam up in that situation, to be to ally, right? To choose to trust and cooperate. Generally speaking, un unless, like, unless there's a really significant track history to suggest betrayal, right? An anticipated betrayal from the other person. It's tough when you don't know the other person at all, but. Yeah. What would you do? Say you were in apple or banana shoes. Well, hmm. If my erstwhile criminal associate banana is going to keep his mouth shut, then the best choice for me is to spill the beans. That way I only serve one year. But what if he confesses too? Then the smart thing would be for me to do the same. After all, if he cuts a deal and I don't, then I'll spend 15 years in prison. If I confess, I can shave five years off of that. Then it seems like the best choice is always going to be to confess. Interesting. But you're forgetting something important, which is. That banana will be thinking the same thing. So you'll both confess and you'll both end up serving 10 years. Do you get it? If you both trusted each other, then neither of you would have served more than two years. But because you both made the decision based on your own self interest, you're going to spend eight more years in prison. In other words, the logical decision leads not only to a less desirable outcome on the group level, but also a pretty crappy situation on the personal level, too. You see now? The AB game is the prisoner's dilemma. Yeah, they are pretty much the same thing. If we trust Alice, we can both increase our BP by two. But if we don't trust each other, in the long run, it won't benefit either of us. Hmm. Yeah, but this is where it gets interesting. Let's say for a moment all nine of us are on one team. Who would we be playing against? Zero, of course. Right. So we can assume the nine of us are fighting zero in the AB game. If you look at it that way, what would we want to do to beat him? Everybody should ally. Just look at the point totals. Say we all picked ally. What would our total points be? Oh、uh, well, two times nine is eighteen, so eighteen points. 
Okay, now let's say one of the pairs chooses Betray. The pair who picked Betray will get three points each, so in total they'll have six points. But the solo they betrayed will have two points subtracted, so the total gain for that game would only be four points. The other two groups would choose Ally for that round, right? Yeah. So for the other teams, you'll get six each, which will give you two times six is twelve. Plus four, sixteen points total. So what does that tell you? If we consider all nine of us to be on the same team, we need to all always choose ally to get the most points. Yeah, we've, we've walked through a little bit of this. If even one person chooses to betray, the total points we get goes down. Exactly. In this game, if each individual acts for the benefit of the whole group, everyone benefits. I think really what kind of, I don't know, reduces the complexity of this though is, at least what I'm assuming, is an accountability factor, right? This is multiple decisions in the making that are necessary, and after each decision the results can be tied to each individual voter, right? Which I think reduces the complexity of it. It makes it less likely that somebody's going to betray. <laughs> But if everyone starts looking out for themselves, it'll impact the group negatively. And eventually, it'll impact them negatively, too. If all of us choose Betray, then the group gets zero points. Ultimately, nobody benefits. Not even the individual. In other words, selfish but logical decisions hurt everyone, and they hurt you. So... Ally? <laughs> okay, I think I get it. What you're saying is that I should pick Ally. No. I mean the opposite. What? What? If you're going to make the most logical choice here, the only option is betray. What? Why? Do you, do you know something... I don't? Are you zero? Are you the... you know, the betrayer? You just explained why that was a terrible idea. No, I didn't. It's not the prisoner's solution, it's the prisoner's dilemma. Even though there's an outcome where everybody's happy, the choice you'd have to make for that outcome isn't the rational one. You want to pick it, but you can't. I mean, it's a, it's a game of trust, right? If you trust the other people, then you should go for that ally decision. And, I mean, I'm sure Fi, Fi seems like an incredibly intelligent, logical character already, right? But, and so I, I feel bad, you know, doubting it, but is Fi thinking about the next Ambidex game, right? We just talked about how if you choose Betray, it's likely that you're not your future partner is not going to pick ally as well and if everybody picks betray it's a waste of an ambidex game right if you're thinking about that you need to do future ambidex games i don't i don't see how you can really put yourself in the position of betray obviously oh of course still assuming there's some sort of record of your choice a dilemma If we choose Ally and Alice does too, then yes, it'll be great. All three of us will get two points. That would be ideal, obviously. And it would help everybody. For what it's worth, I feel like, and fine, we've already walked through this plenty of times in the past, like, 20 minutes. Can we, uh, can we move on to the part where we start actually, you know, 
fighting between Sigma and Phi uh, to do any voting. But what if Alice chooses Betray? Our BP will go down to one. Right. And if that happens, we're screwed. So... Twenty minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Unless we can be certain that Alice will choose Ally, we don't have a choice. We have to choose Betray. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to know that for certain. That means we have to make the rational choice. It would be great to make the right choice, but we can't. I still disagree. Hey, did you just say we're screwed? If you don't mind telling me, what did you mean by that? I'm guessing something happens if our BP hits zero, right? I mean, the way you said it sure makes it seem like something's going to happen. Do you know something? You do know something. What are you hiding? Yeah, you know, there's been something weird about you from the moment we met. I mean, for starters, how'd you know my name? Oh, knock it off. This is getting old. I don't care if it's getting ancient. <laughs> this is important. Which is, overall, a great point to make. I don't know you. But you seem to know me somehow. The only explanation I can think of that makes any kind of sense is that you're working with Zero. What about you? What? Are you working with Zero? Wait, why? Why is Phi suspecting us now? Are we acting suspiciously? Me? Why would you think that? You're too calm? That's a pretty weak argument from somebody so rational. You make up trapped in some kind of twisted game and it doesn't even phase you? That hardly seems normal. Wouldn't such an argument also apply to you, Fi? Oh, come on. I could ask you the same thing. Exactly. Don't change the subject. We're talking about you. Maybe you actually do know me. What? Where the heck did that come from? Look, I already told you, I've never seen you. Before, in my life. What the heck? A knife? Pointing fingers? Shattered? Somebody getting thrown in like an elevator? Is that a bomb? Sigma. Sigma. Just let it go. Our time's up. This is it. Before, well, before it ends, I wanted to tell you thanks. You know we're about to die, but you still stuck with me. So, thank you, Sigma. What? Is this like a... Oh, there was that mention in the opening, right? Events in the future impacting the past? Is there some degree of time travel going on? What? Goodbye. What? Explosion in some random desert where they're probably being trapped. Whatever decisions they made in the past clearly didn't work out well. What? What was that? What's wrong? I saw... Saw what? The... The explosion. Explosion? 
I think there's a bomb somewhere in this building. I'm not sure, but it sounded like it was on a timer. You and I were trying to stop it, but we couldn't do anything, and... 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 Whoa, Sigma! Calm down! What are you talking about? Ugh. What is it now? My head... It hurts? Yeah. You know, you said it hurt when you first woke up in the AB room, too. It didn't just hurt, it felt like it was going to explode. Are you alright? I think so. Maybe you should rest a little. Yeah, maybe I could just lay my head on your lap. Fai's like, I don't know about that one. Of course. I shouldn't have worried. Come on, Sigma, you're, you're ruining your own credibility. Fai and I spent the rest of the time until the door opened in silence. The AB game was forgotten as I tried to make sense of what I'd seen. Part of what's interesting is if Sigma is potentially going to be influenced by essentially memories of an alternate future, are the other players going to be having the same impact? For example, can we assume that this is how Phi acted on that other timeline? I don't know, but if that's the case, then Sigma is going to fight even harder than, necess than before to ensure that Phi doesn't act the way she did originally. Had it been real in any way? Or was it just a hallucination brought on by stress or maybe some strange drug they dosed me with while I was out? And it seemed real though. Was it a premonition? I had to stifle a bark of laughter at the thought. Seeing the future? This wasn't some crappy sci-fi novel, this was real life. Things like that didn't happen. I was just tired. The stress of the Nonary game was probably getting to me more than Phi thought. And, uh, oh, that's right, the stress of the Nonary game. It brings you closer in tune with the morphogenetic fields, that's the term. <laughs> I had forgotten about morphogenetic fields. How could I have forgotten? I was tired, and I was emotional. A hallucination was strange, but really, it was perfectly understandable. But what if I wasn't losing it? What if I was fine? What if it hadn't been a hallucination? I sat there for what felt like hours, my mind running in circles. Eventually you have to vote though, don't you? Ambidex game. Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. So it's finally getting to the time where they actually they actually have to make a decision, right? They've been sitting here in silence for like 20 minutes. But Fi is pretty adamant that they should choose to betray. Whereas every bit of me personally is saying to choose ally. And I'm sure Sigma is feeling the same way. So I'm not really sure how these last five minutes are going to go, but I can only imagine the tensions are going to get fairly heated. But of course, I'm going to say that we'll find out what actually does happen in the next episode. This was, this was a good episode. I liked learning a little bit more about how the game is working. I like the thought process of the prisoner's dilemma and thinking about its implications. I do think they, you know, uh, overdo it a little bit <laughs> with the explanations about how it works, but I guess better safe than sorry. And... I'm really curious to see, you know, more about this alternative timeline, these future events, and how Sigma is related to them, and why it's, you know, specifically him that's seeing them, and if Sigma is going to gain a sort of self-awareness about them and you try to utilize them to alter the path of the group this time around. That could be really interesting. And then, of course, I'm really curious to see how these last five minutes are going to go, because I can imagine things will get pretty tense. But... Anyways, I hope you guys are just as excited for that next episode as I am. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.